Folks, welcome back to another episode of The Fallen Badge. Today we're going to look at the murder of Chief George Lashley, Gibsonville Police Department, North Carolina. Chief Lashley was 31 years old. Now he'd been a policeman for about 10 years. Now Chief Lashley, he had served in the Navy. Now he'd only been with the Gibsonville Police Department for about two months as their chief. Now prior to coming there and taking over the chief duties, he'd been an officer in Lexington Police Department and he'd been the chief of the Troy Police Department. At the time of his death, he had a wife, three children. I'm sorry to say I could not find any pictures of Chief Lashley. I sure couldn't find one, so I apologize. Now, the year is 1973. Now, Gibsonville's only got about 9,000 people now. So you can imagine back in 73, it was a pretty small town. I'd say a pretty quiet town from what I read. Now our story is going to open up the morning of June 29th, 1973. This information is going to come from the appellate court there in the great state of North Carolina. Now it seems that our primary suspect, who didn't seem to be a very good fella, he was hanging out with another fella and a couple of girls. Now they were driving around the the county there and the adjoining counties. Some point during their little travels, they stopped near a lake, not sure where that lake is. And uh, our suspect and his partner in crime, they was firing off a 25 caliber pistol the suspect owned. Now at some point in the evening, they drove back to Greensboro, which is the I guess would have been the big city there. It's pretty close to Gibsonville. It's just west of there. Now, the suspect and his partner, they dropped the girls off at a bar. And the two desperados, they were driving around. Now, they decided that they were going to either buy or steal some drugs from a doctor's office there in Gibsonville. And now they went back by the bar and picked up the girls. They're off to Gibsonville to get them some drugs. I don't know what kind of drugs. Now, the suspect's armed with a 25 caliber pistol, and his partner's got a sawed-off shotgun. So they drive into town. Now, they get the case in the doctor's office, but there's too many people hanging around. So they decide to call off their little operation. So they went and got them something to eat there in town, and then they drove over to the city sewer system's pumping station. And all four of them fell asleep. Now, regarding the pumping station, according to the resource material, that pumping station used to sit there on Highway 61, just south of town there. Highway 61 and Highway 100, they merged together just a little south of the of the pumping station. So it's somewhere there in that area. Now, that pumping station's not there anymore, so... What I've done is the pumping station you're seeing in the pictures is the one that the town has now. Now that one's located in the northeast part of town. In any event, the four of them are asleep, these desperados. Now, on the morning of the 30th, a city employee, a fella named Vance Evans, he's going by checking on the pumping station there, and he sees that car sitting there and four people in it asleep. So he calls the police. Chief Lashley, he comes out there. Now, Chief Lashley gets out of his car and he walks up to the suspect's vehicle. And everybody in there is still asleep. 
But now he sees that sawed-off shotgun laying in the car. So he wakes everybody up. Now the chief handcuffs the suspect, hands behind his back. And he gets everybody else out of the car. Now, of course, chief ain't got but one pair of handcuffs. So he's got them all out of the car. Now he's got the one fella handcuffed. So now the chief, he gets to search in the car. Now that suspect and his partner, they're standing out on the driver's side. And the two girls are standing out on the passenger side of the car. Now all the doors are left standing open. Now what little information's given on the car, it sounds like it was a two-door. But in any event, both doors are open. Now Chief Lashley, he searched the car. He started on the driver's side and then he went to the passenger side. Now that suspect's little 25 caliber pistol, it was under the driver's seat. But now Chief Lashley didn't see it, which it isn't hard to, to miss a pistol that size up underneath a seat and a floorboard. So now the chief, he's over on the pasture side, and he's bent down looking in the car. And the suspect, he's standing over there by the door on the driver's side. Now the chief, he's looking through a bag, and the chief happens to glance up, and the suspect shoots him for that 25 because he done slipped it out from underneath the seat. Now the suspect's able to shoot the chief with his hand still cuffed behind him. And of course the fact that the chief is bent over makes it easy on the suspect to do it. Chief Lashley's hit with that one round and he dies just a couple minutes later. Now the suspect, he took off in the woods and he dropped his little pistol. Now of course they, they get the police out there, state police and anybody else they can find. Well now they, they catch this fella. Now, they had a forensic pathologist do the autopsy on Chief Lashley. Now, he said that that bullet went in in the area of the right shoulder, tracked down, downward to the left, passed through the right lung and the aorta, came to rest in the area of the pancreas, which explains why the chief died so quick. That shot to the aorta would have made it quick. Now, the pathologist was even able to say that at the time the chief was shot, he was he was bent over just from the track of the bullet because he said that that bullet went right to left from top to bottom and slightly from front to back. So that means the chief had to have been bent over. Now, the state police, they were able to do gunshot residue tests on the suspect's hands and on his clothing. Now, they found gunshot residue between the belt loops on the suspect's pants. Now, they didn't state where exactly on the pants, but now there was a circular area there where the state expert could say this is is where that pistol would have been sitting when he was carrying it, which showed at some point he was carrying a gun. Now, of course, that's not 100%, but now you take that information plus the gunshot residue test of the suspect's hands because now they wiped the palms of his hands and the back of his hands and according to the state police best they could say is the subject could have handled and fired a gun that's the best you can do in court because there's always some other explanations for it now the suspect was found guilty and he went to prison he got st- attacked and stabbed by some of the inmates after he'd been in there for a little bit. Now, he survived that. In fact, he survived long enough to continuously appeal his death sentence that he got. Chief George Lee Lashley. End of watch, June 30th, 1973.